Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series and I have announced in the community tab that I'll be taking up the objective questions 8 and 9 from the thermal physics chapter that bugs the students usually, right? So the first problem is about the comparison of pressure uh, exerted by a gas on a warmer wall compared to a colder wall, okay? And the second one, which is a continuation of the uh, previous question, um, is a case where there is two chambers uh, separated by a piston and one chamber is heated and the piston starts moving and over a period of time in order to exchange the heat between the chambers the piston executes damped oscillations okay so there'll be also a surprise demo to use the fact and the theory that will be understanding through these problems and it will be very exciting so stay till the end of the video as always, we'll be topping off this video with few practice problems to enhance our understanding of the subject. Okay, I'm pretty excited. I hope you are too. So let's move forward and take up the problem statements first. Okay, so this is the problem statement one, the question number eight, as I suggested, if you want to give it a try, pause the video here, read it, try it for two or three minutes and then do Come back. This is the problem statement two, as I suggested, oscillating piston. Okay, right. And before I start off with the uh, problem statements and the solutions, uh, one humble request as always, a lot of effort has been put into the uh, making of this video as usual. So please ensure that you do like the video if you get something out of it, which uh, ensures that the channel reach increases. Okay, so as is the game that we have been playing in the last few weeks, uh, the target likes are 750 for this video or 10 days time, within 10 days time. So if the target doesn't reach, I'll upload the video after 10 days. And if it reaches early, I will go ahead with the next awesome video as you have chosen some uh, choices in the community post. Okay, thanks for all the support that you have been uh, giving and all the understanding you had patiently waiting for these quality videos, okay? So let's start with the problem statement one. In a container, air is filled and maintained at temperature T naught. Inner surfaces of walls of the container is maintained at temperature T. At different values of this walls temperatures T that are less than or equal to or greater than the gas temperature T naught, pressure exerted by the air on the container walls are P1, P2, P3 respectively. So he's asking what is the relation between these pressures when the walls are warmer, colder or equal to the temperature of the gas inside. Usually we consider the uh, temperature of walls and the temperature of the gas to be same in most of our problems. So this is slightly a different scenario wherein he's uh, asking us to analyze. This was a previous Olympiad problem as the case with most of the problems in the book. Okay, so we'll try to see a demo also where this concept would be utilized. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, just to refresh our idea of kinetic theory of gases that we use for ideal gases, right? We all know that we will be considering that the gas molecules will be moving in a random manner in a three dimensional motion manner. And here only 2D picture is uh, taken into account. Uh, we understand that the pressure exerted on the walls is due to the collisions and the impulse imparted to these walls over a period of time. Okay, right. And for any YZ plane wall, the only X direction of motion of these molecules is important because we consider the uh, collisions to be elastic. Not only that, if the gas contains mixture of gases, as you could see, there are some red balls and uh, uh, green, uh, sorry, uh, blue balls, <clears throat> the degrees of freedom, right, could be different for different gases, but the energy that would be transmitted by these molecules per degree of freedom, right, per degree of freedom in one particular direction is always the same, half kT per molecule. Okay, so this would be also utilized in understanding how uh, we uh, look at the uh, Maxwell's distribution or the idea of pressure in mixture of gases. Okay, so uh, with that idea, we'll go forward and see uh, that by chance, if the wall has a different temperature, different from the gas itself, over a period of time, the gas molecules try to achieve the speed 
that is the maintenance by the wall. Okay, so the wall's duty is to ensure that the gas inside gets its own temperature over a period of time. So in that scenario, the speed which, which the ball uh, or the molecule hits will not be the speed of rebound. Okay, uh, that speed of rebound would be higher if the wall is at a higher temperature and the rebound speed would be lower if the wall is at a lower temperature. This is the idea we will carry forward to the next page. A okay, lot of things on the board. Just uh, instead of reading and getting confused on your own, follow the voice and where I'm pointing, just have a look, I'll explain and it will all be clear, okay? So average force on the wall is decided by the rebound speed. So all this uh, three-dimensional motion that we were, are looking at in case of an ideal gas, uh, the collisions with the wall, especially let's say this YZ wall we take, we only consider the X component of the velocity and uh, take that as ux assume temperature of the gas is t naught temperature of the wall it's going to collide is capital t and because as i said these two may not be equal the rebound speed component in x direction is v itself let's suppose then the average force that would be exerted on this would be simply the change in momentum which it went with ux came back with v so change in momentum would be m into ux plus v divided by the time duration for which this collision again happens. So it went in with a distance of LX, I am taking it as L itself. Okay, it's so divided by UX, that onward time, and the return journey is L divided by V, which is going to be uh, the speed with which it came down. Okay, right, some factors could be also there that we are not considering. And uh, this average force divided by the area of the wall, which is another L square will produce the value of pressure. And if you manipulate this and you see that this force comes out to be proportional to the product of the incoming velocity and the outgoing rebound velocity. And each of these velocities by our KTG or kinetic theory of gases would be proportional to the square root of temperature. VRMS speeds and average speeds are proportional to square root of temperature. This UX is associated with the temperature of the gas and this v would be associated with the future temperature of the gas if gas is not maintained at t naught the walls are maintained at t then gas will finally turn out to have the same temperature so this v can be assumed to be proportional to capital t okay so if these two are equal then these two numbers are equal and you end up getting the value of pressure which happens when it is equal but if t naught is less than t, that means the wall is at a warmer temperature, then the rebound speed is greater and the pressure exerted would be larger, which in this problem was given as P3. And simultaneously, if the wall is cooler, then the rebound speeds are smaller and the pressure P1 that was given in the question would be the least. So using this ideology, that warmer walls exert greater pressure on gas molecules as compared to the colder walls, you should arrive at this answer of P1 less than P2 less than P3. Okay, so where is a demonstration uh, in which this particular principle will be used, right? So. This is one of the famous demonstrations on internet. You can Google search for it. Uh, radiometer or the light wheel as it is fondly called. Okay, so the idea of that warmer walls exert more pressure than the colder walls on surrounding air is wonderfully illustrated in the famous radiometer demonstration. A lot of misconceptions are there about how it works and all that in the internet. I think this particular concept should put that to bed. Okay, so in this uh, thing, there will be a uh, shinier uh, uh, part of the wheel and then there is a um, darker or you could say black part of the wheel. You will shine light on this and this wheel starts rotating because of the incidence of the photons of the light. So initial instinct of the students would be to say the radiation pressure is the reason and but it is not okay in fact actually the rotation happens in the reverse to the expectation from the radiation pressure explanation okay so what actually happens is let me show you the demonstration once okay so right now you have that radiometer or the light wheel this white one is the shinier one which reflects light when it falls on it and the left one is the black one which absorbs light okay so let's shine light on this Okay, now once you shine light on this, uh, it starts rotating as you could see. Okay, so whenever you put the light, it actually beautifully rotates. So the idea here is that, let me pause this a bit. So the idea here is 
uh, initial uh, misconception would be that photons are uh, reflecting from the white surface and therefore applying more pressure and the photons are absorbed by the black surface therefore applying less pressure but if you carefully pause the video and maybe search for better videos uh, on the demonstration of this you would see actually the direction of motion of this is in reverse it's as if the force on the black one is greater as compared to the white one in fact the reasoning is that uh, yes light is a uh, one of the uh, reasons for it to rotate but not by the radiation pressure that would be tiny uh, because the black one absorbs light and becomes warmer within no time and as the warmer walls are exerted by uh, the air molecules around right remember this is not in vacuum air molecules around that they'll exert more pressure and the lighter uh, or the white part which is cooler is going to have a lesser air pressure and because of that explanation in this particular case the rotation would happen okay so this is a very nice demo that uh, black side absorbs radiation and warms up and therefore exerts more pressure could be realized okay so i hope you found this one very intriguing let me move on to the next question before i move on uh, the idea about this orderly energy and disorderly energy and the collisions i've made a few videos i can put only two thumbnails from the past videos here just try to watch these two old videos on the idea of uh, orderly energy disorderly energy how the energy transfer takes place during collisions etc links of these videos are in the description below or the i button above okay so i have done collision problems with the analogy of thermodynamics okay so it would be nice if you are new to this channel to watch these two this is the problem statement too so you want to give it a try again pause and then move ahead okay i'm going ahead with the formal reading a piston can slide without friction inside a horizontal cylindrical vessel which contains an ideal monoatomic gas the piston and the inner surface of the cylinder are coated with a thin layer of a perfect heat insulating material initially the piston in equilibrium divides the cylinder into two parts a and b which are not necessarily equal the temperatures of the gases in both parts are already given equal now the piston is held in the initial position and the gas in part a as you could see at the bottom right of your screen is supplied some heat and then the piston is released what will the piston do in the subsequent motion you can actually read through all the four options and uh, options are definitely of different kinds so we'll try to see what happens if at all piston stops or continues to move or oscillate if it stops where does it stop does it stop at the same position as the start or will it go to other places okay so this would be another interesting one to look at so a lot of things again <clears throat> that we need to consider actually there are multiple ways of looking at this uh, interesting problem it's not a very straightforward one so we'll try to see a basic j e way or the 12th class way of looking at things there is a more rigorous solution also which i'll leave it for the uh, future video okay so this is the page one of the discussion so we'll move on to the page two so a lot of things are there again just hold my hand i'll take you through okay so what i have depicted here is uh, as shown in the question that there was some heat which is a kind of a disorder form of energy that was given to this chamber okay now as you release the piston you would see that there will be more collisions uh, per unit time on the left hand side as compared to the right hand side which has not yet received the heat so these molecules are not moving that fast so this piston starts moving towards right this motion of the piston uh, moving to the right is nothing but an orderly kinetic energy there is no randomness to this okay so half mv square the formula that we write is an orderly form of energy so the disorder form that was there in the form of heat actually does work on this piston and creates a orderly form of energy that orderly form of energy starts heating these gas molecules again supplies a disorder to them okay right and uh, again once it goes to the right hand side uh, the reverse happens and it keeps going back and forth uh, as this energy starts getting transferred from a to b which is interesting because even though we say the piston is adiabatic the energy can transfer from a to b in a different format here but there is one thing that you need to consider okay so let's let me first of all read these parts for you the heat supplied to chamber a is a form of disorder which first gets transferred to the piston and which then gets transferred to the chamber b 
In final equilibrium state, if at all it exists, let's say the piston comes to rest, the pressure on both sides should be equal. Okay, so here the pressure and here the pressure should be finally equal. Second law dictates, the second law of thermodynamics, I mean, second law of thermodynamics dictates that all the orderly energy of this particular system, which contains the piston, uh, should completely convert to the disorderly form. Okay, a disorder the internal energies of the gases. Why is that so? Because we'd say second law, the entropy of this entire uh, universe is increasing and uh, this particular system therefore has to increase its entropy. Entropy or the disorder will be increased only if this particular piston is kind finally going to come to rest. You might argue saying, okay, fine, uh, piston may still have a uh, small non-zero kinetic energy and still entropy can increase. I have a solution for that also. Uh, if the piston were assumed to be moving even in the final state, we will be uh, having some problem because any moving piston, there will be uh, two sides to it. Okay, right side neighborhood and the left side neighborhood. And these two places, the pressures cannot be equal. Okay, I'll elaborate this idea in the next place. Just try to keep this in mind. I'm claiming that if the piston continues to move, the right side neighborhood just to the right of the piston and left side neighborhood just to the left of the piston, the, the pressures cannot be equal, which is finally what is required. Okay, so the damping should take place according to this idea and piston finally should come to rest. Okay, this idea uh, is, uh, I'll go back to the next, I'll go to the next page. I'll try to explain that idea of uh, the pistons each side energy and then we'll come back to the uh, calculations here. Okay, so stay with me. Uh, so the pressure in the neighborhood of the moving piston has been nicely explained in a source of a European Journal of Physics called as damped oscillations of a frictionless piston in an adiabatic cylinder enclosing an ideal gas. Even though the example taken in that paper by Carl E. Mungan is not the same as the bottom right picture, which is our Pathfinder question. So in that he argues that whenever we have a uh, velocity for the piston and you have different pressures on either side, the value of this pressure, there will be a small region, which is to the uh, backside of this piston. You could see small shaded region where he writes the pressure as P tilde or P bar or something like that. Whereas the entire gas will have a different pressure called bulk pressure, which will be varying with time. Whenever the gas entirely doesn't have a uniform value of pressure, you cannot define a state function for the gas. This value of dynamic pressure will be greater or lesser depending on the direction of motion of the piston. Keeping that in mind, you borrow that information to this piston moving towards right. There will be more crowdedness of molecules just to the right, therefore the Pb tilde, which is the dynamic pressure as I defined right now, would be greater than the value of the bulk pressures. So the entire pressure in B chamber, if piston continues to move, will not be equal. There will be a Pb tilde, which will be greater than Pb. Similarly, on the left side, as this piston moves off, molecules will not find time to actually settle down quickly. And therefore, there will be some rarity or you could say voke that would be created or less density of molecules will be created here, which creates a dynamic pressure called PA tilde or PA bar. And that PA tilde should be less than value of PA, which is bulk pressure. So once this non-uniformity occurs, the process undergone by each of these gases would be irreversible and you cannot use any state functions in between. So for the disorder to completely transfer to these gases, A and B, the piston has to finally come to rest and then the pressures will be becoming equal. So what I would like you to do is, uh, I'll give you the link for this particular PDF. You need to uh, go through the certain section there, section two or something, I'll put that in the next page and you will be able to establish this idea more clearly. So let's go back to the previous slide. Now that we understand that the pressures finally have to be same on both sides, you can also say that the piston here with all this view acts like a giant molecule. A has certain number of molecules, B has certain number of molecules and piston itself you can visualize as a giant molecule which is just used to transfer the energy from A to B via collisions. A collides with piston, which is like a molecule, big molecule, and that molecule transfers the energy to B via collisions. Okay, so as I said, it is like a mixture of gases where this giant molecules 
uh, energy per degree of freedom uh, in one particular x direction is always the same and doesn't depend on the size of the molecule. Okay, so this is another idea which should convince you with all these things put together that the pressure on this side and this side finally has to be equal. Imagine I write the ideal gas law equation for this volume V1 and this volume V2 initially. Okay, initially, let's say pressures are both sides P0 and P0, temperatures are both sides T0 and T0. V1 and V2, N1 and N2 are the number of moles on either side. Okay, right. So if I divide these two initial equations, I'll get V1 by V2 is N1 by N2. Now, once the heat has been transferred to A and it gets transferred in this orderly disorderly fighting that takes place. Okay. And finally, piston, let's say came to rest at some other position and the volumes became V3 and V4. Remember total volume is same, but they, the piston could have stopped at a different position. Assume the volumes have become V3 and V4 and the pressure and temperatures would increase. Obviously you have introduced more disorder. So more temperature and more pressure. So Pressures finally on both sides are, let's say, PF, and temperatures on both sides are TF. I'll write again the two chamber equations like this and divide these two equations upon themselves. I'll end up getting that V3 by V4 is also N1 by N2, same as V1 by V2. So uh, since the summation is same and the ratio also remains same, individually the value of V1 and V3 uh, V3 and V2 and V4 should be same. That means the piston not only comes to rest, but also finally comes to rest at the initial position only with new values of pressure and temperature. And finally, the state gets defined. As the piston is continuing to move and getting damped, as the energy gets transferred to chamber B from A, the states of these gases are not defined. This is an irreversible process that is taking place in chamber A and chamber B. B. I hope you understood all the things that I tried to convey. Okay, so as I said, I'll give you the link for this particular PDF. Okay, so you may go through the journal provided in the description and arrive at a more rigorous based solution using entropy. Here I've used the theory and understanding of a 12th class student at a JE level trying to explain why the piston comes back to the original position. But th th this particular journal is so beautiful for those students who are preparing for Olympiad. I would urge you to go through the section two of that PDF. Okay, in that section two, he discusses the idea of this dynamic pressure in which gas atoms are moving at a different speed as compared to the moving piston. He talks about the pressure in front of it and behind it. Okay, and he calculates the value of that so-called dynamic pressure in terms of the bulk pressure P. Okay, and goes on and on in that uh, particular problem to arrive at an entropy way of solving this uh, uh, pathfinder question. It's not the same question. You can go through the section, apply that to this uh, question to end up at the rigorous solution, which again gives you the same answer. Okay, so the PDF of the general is in the description below. Download it and enjoy. Okay, All right. Uh, before we go to the practice problems, as I always uh, give you the uh, links uh, for connecting to me, there is a Discord server, there's a Telegram group of doubt solving for the students, and there is a website where all the videos are arranged in a chapter wise manner. Okay, and uh, if you're a student, stay away from the social media at the bottom three. But if you are someone else who wants to connect with me, these are the three things. All the links of these relevant th uh, things would be available in the about me section of the channel. To the right side top of your screen okay uh, as uh, how to use the website i've already made a video how is it useful for the um, je aspirants especially or even teachers um, just make sure you watch that video to understand the usage of the website the link of that video is in the description below or the i button above Okay, this is the practice problem. It's a passage question contains two questions. So I have divided into two pages, one A. So this is about the mixture of gases and how to understand the uh, Maxwell's uh, idea or uh, distribution of velocities and also the KTG applicable for the mixture of gases. It's a very nice question. Uh, this is the first question. Second one is in the next page. Both the questions try to read through and one or more than one correct is there with the passage. Comment your response below with the timestamp. Timestamp is important because as the video grows older, it would be easier for me to navigate and respond to your doubts. Okay, right. So this is the first one. Second one I picked from Pathfinder, but this time from the oscillations chapter, I think it's chapter 10, if I am not wrong. Uh, 
it's an objective five. Okay, so this is the question. This is the diagram about oscillations of the piston, it's similar to the one that we did, but with slight twist. Okay, so these are the options. Try to comment your response with the timestamp below. Also, your way of solving so that I can respond. Timestamp is important. This is the practice problem three. We are back to thermal physics problem. Um, a chapter, uh, problem number 12. It's about, again, a object moving and gases colliding on either side of that object. Objective here is a cylindrical box. So it causes some kind of drag force. So how do you apply your concept here it becomes very important. So let me see how many of you get this one right. OK, so comment your response below with the timestamp. So apart from this, as you would have seen the old videos also, the heat and thermodynamics playlist subtopic wise have been uh, already channelized and they are put up in the description below. Our on the I button above, one of the playlists will be there. So please make sure you uh, go through them, uh, try to see them in the order of the upload, and you will definitely start getting enriched in the subject. A lot of effort and love has been poured into those videos. You will not regret them. Uh, regarding the Discord server, what is it? If you are a beginner, you want to understand how you can use the Physics Surgery official Discord server. Um, uh, what are the QOTDs questions of the day that I keep posting on the community tab? Um, just try to subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the notification icon so whenever I post a community tab question, you will end up getting them. So watch the video tutorial video on the Discord server. Uh, link of that video is in the de description below or the I button above. You'll understand how to utilize this 3K subscriber uh, Discord server. A lot of good students are there who help each other. Apart from the Pathfinder solution series that you're watching this video on, uh, there are uh, many other series. Only four have written on the screen here. All these cater to the different needs of the students and also uh, the people who are physics enthusiasts. So links of all these playlists are in the description below. Or you can directly go to the playlist section of this channel. I've arranged them, try to uh, siphon them in a proper manner so that you can enjoy and get most out of the channel. OK, so please do enjoy, but also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Liking the video is like a uh, fossil fuel for this particular channel. Please don't let it die. Uh, keep it running because I like connecting to you, but I need that motivation of the channel getting propagated to more and more audience. I hope you help me in that. I'll try to ensure I'll be there in the next awesome video. Okay, so see you there.